Hi everyone, this is Niall from windowsnoob.com and today this is part nine of my uh, MBAM BitLocker management series uh, for Microsoft Endpoint Manager Configuration Manager version 1910 and later. Today we're going to talk about group policy and well specifically MDOP ADMX templates, why you should use them, where to get them, how to install them and why would you want to use them uh, with Configuration Manager version 1910 when you enable the BitLocker management feature? One of the reasons why you would want to use them is because they can coexist as long as you don't have conflicting settings and they can give you some finer control over what you can do today in uh, Configuration Manager version 1910. So let's get right into it and have a quick look at how to do that. Before we start, I want to, to remind you that if you're looking for this information, just search for want to learn about MBAM and you'll find a blog post I've written and I've added some extra links in there. First of all, you can see here's the videos I've done previously. This is the one I'm videoing right now. But I've added these uh, two links here. One allows you to download the Windows 10 version 1909 ADMX templates. The next one is how to use the central store for Windows 10 ADMX files. So download that first, then read this to see how it works. And then once you've done all that, you need to get the actual uh, MBAM uh, ADMX templates themselves. They are separate to these ones here. Right, so you need to to uh, download the MBAM ones separately and uh, extract them, and then uh, copy them into your policy definitions, your central store. All right, so that's what we're going to cover today, and we're going to look at configuring one of those GPO settings to see, you know, how does it work on an MBAM uh, on a BitLocker management policy targeted uh, client. Okay. So let's head right over to the uh, domain controller. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up Windows File Explorer, and I'm just going to show you something here. So here under sysvol on the domain controller, we've got windowsnoob.lab.local. That's our domain name. And if we go into the policies subfolder, we can see our group policy objects are there. But we also have something called policy definitions. That's your central store. And in there, it is populated. I populated it earlier with the Windows 10 version 1909 uh, ADMX templates, right? And that's all of them there, loads of them, right? But what you don't see there are BitLocker, or MDOP specific uh, templates. So that's what we need to solve. So just so that you have a better idea of how that works, I'm just going to open up a random GPO before we do any of the MDOP changes. And we're going to go into policies, administrative templates. <clears throat> and what I want to show you here or demonstrate is that if we look here under Windows Components, what you cannot see is anything that's MDOP specific, right? MDOP or MBAM. It's just not there. Right, and that's because we haven't imported any of that yet. So let's get right to it. Uh, we'll open up Internet Explorer and we need to download the MDOP templates. Right, so let's put in that URL. <clears throat> and here they are. What do you want to do with the MDOP underscore AMDX underscore templates dot cab? Well, do you notice the mistake here? AMDX, it should be ADMX, but that doesn't really matter. Let's just save it. <clears throat> it's a typo, obviously. And we'll open the folder. So there they are, right there, okay? So what we want to do now is to uh, create a little folder structure before we go and extract them. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And let's move to that folder, not that one, set up, okay. And in here we have nothing, so let's uh, copy c colon backslash users administrator 
downloads and this one this one okay so there we have the m.amdx a m d x templates cab file now what we're going to do is expand them out so that we can actually utilize them we'll do that using the expand command and off it goes expanding the files all right 242 files extracted so now uh, the next thing to do is go locate those files and not here here we go to C setup extracted right and in there you can see there's lots of subfolders but there's only one that we're interested in and that's this one here mbam 2.5 sp1 so let's go in there and you will see that there are more files and folders right there are these admx files bitlocker management and if you go into the language specific subfolder you'll see adml files all right so let's go back here to this and i'm gonna keep this one over on the left and policy definitions over on the right <clears throat> so what we want to do is move copy all of this over to here and that's what we're going to do paste okay so we should see our two bitlocker management and bitlocker user management uh, admx files and if we go to the language specific we should also see the ADML files and there they are. They're now in the central store. So if I was to uh, open up group policy management again, which I will, <clears throat> we should see a difference. So let's open up the same uh, GPO that we were looking at earlier and we should see a difference now. So under policies, administrative, administrative templates, uh, let's go to Windows components. And if we look here, we see something brand new and shiny. And there it is, MDOP MBAM BitLocker Management. So basically what we have now done is we have brought in, we've, you know, brought in these templates and they will uh, allow us to make MDOP related changes in group policy, which we can then target to any specific OU in order to do what we want, all right? So if you want to get um, descriptions of what those actual group policy settings do, uh, you can go back to this link here and you see here, planning for MBAM group policy, click on that. And it actually gives you information about the uh, type of protectors and what the group policies themselves do, right? So here's policy name choose drive encryption and what does it do the one thing that i will point out again is use these sparingly if you are also using bitlocker management in a configuration manager 1910 or later you do not want these group policy settings conflicting in any way with your bitlocker management settings that you've created policy for in config manager okay because that will only cause you problems right so now that we know where to get the templates and how to see what each gpo does why don't we go ahead and set a gpo deploy it to now you deploy it then to a um uh, a configuration manager client that has the BitLocker management policy deployed to it and see what the result is, okay? So what we'll do is let's um, create, let's create a new policy and we'll, a new a GPO and we'll call this one <clears throat> MBAM or MDOP GPO for BitLocker management. Okay, and let's go ahead and edit within here. So we're going to actually edit the GPO. And we will pick one of them. I'll show you now in a moment which one. So let's scroll down to MDOP MBAM. And I think if we open this one here, and where is the specific setting that I want? Uh, let's see. 
these are all not configured. Uh, this one here might be it. Configure pre-boot recovery message in URL. Yes, this is the one. Okay, so what this GPO does is it configures the blue screen that you would see when something goes wrong uh, on a client computer. It allows you to customize it somewhat. Not a whole lot, but at least somewhat over the standard message. So before I do that, why don't I show you what it looks like before we configure it? So here is a Windows 10 client, and um, we'll just log on to it, and you'll see that it is already BitLockered, as you can see. And not only is it BitLockered, but this one is, is managed by Configuration Manager. And it, it, has, um, it has the policy applied, it's in PKI mode. The configurations are uh, compliant. And these configurations, this one here, in Enable BitLocker Encryption, this one is our BitLocker Management policy, which we created in Config Manager in a previous video. And this one here is a, a CI, which we use to enforce MBAM encryption silently, right? You could actually have used GPO to do this, but uh, I wanted to show you uh, how to do it via CIs. So CIs, GPOs, it's up to you which one works best or which one you have access to in the environment that you're working in, all right? And I will also point out, you know, when you're doing this, test it in your lab first. Make sure that you know what you're doing before you implement something like this in production, all right? Okay, so what did I want to show you? Let's power this one off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change a setting in the BIOS of this virtual machine I'm going to disable secure boot, and that alone, when I power it on, should um, uh, trigger BitLocker to prompt the end user for the key, right? So let's go in here and disable secure boot and start it up, and we should see a blue error screen, the BitLocker recovery screen, and it says enter the recovery key for this drive. Now we could go to the self-service uh, help desk and get that key and put it in here, um, but we're not going to do that. What I want to show you here is the message, the message that the user sees. This is the default message. And as you can see, it says, for more information on how to retrieve this key, go to aka.ms forward slash recovery, recovery key fac from another PC or mobile device. It's not the friendliest uh, message, and it's not, it's not customized in any way for your environment. So, Let's go ahead and enable that GPO uh, that I was talking about so that we can customize this somewhat. Here's the GPO itself, and it's called Configure Preboot Recovery Message and URL. So let's enable it. And we've got some choices here. Use default recovery message in URL. That was the one we just saw, which would be kind of pointless, enabling it and then using that. Or use a custom recovery message or use custom recovery URL. Now, if you use the custom recovery URL, then it won't use your message. So you can have a message saying, uh, please contact the help desk. Uh, the help desk is listed here. This is the URL, and then put in the URL here. But if you choose this option to use custom recovery URL, it will only list the URL. It will not list your custom message. So keep that in mind when you're playing with this GPO. Uh, because of that, I'd suggest you use this one here, use custom recovery message. And in the custom recovery message, include your custom URL, right? So let's do that. Let's type it in. <clears throat> right, let's see what it says. So basically it's just a nice friend, friendly custom message. To retrieve this key, contact the Windows noob help desk. Alternatively, you can go to HTTP CM01 self-service from another PC or mobile device. Basically, that's pointing to our self-service help desk for the end user, right? So that's a custom message. We're enabling it. We're going to apply this. Click OK. OK. So now that we've um, modified our GPO, that's this one here, and it's in this BitLocker related OU. Let's just see what computers are in there. 
We've got these two here. Let's find out what is the computer name of the one we just powered off. Uh, let's see, would it be in here somewhere? <clears throat> Startup config manager, see can we find the name of this computer? Otherwise we have to change the BIOS settings back, boot it up, find out the name, and then power it off. And uh, go through all of this again. All right. So, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's probably this one here, KRQLR09. I think so, because it was imaged recently. So let's hope that this is the one, and let's add that one to that OU. All right, so let's find it. It's probably in here somewhere. Uh, I think it was this one. <clears throat> let's move that one. So we're going to move that one to workstations bit locker related to get this particular GPO. Now, of course, it will have to have the GPO applied before the before we will see any change in that message. So let's just re-enable secure boot so that it boots normally. That's what it should do now. <clears throat> and then we can update group policy and verify that the computer name while we're at it. And then we'll power it off, disable secure boot, and then have a look at the custom message that we get from the GPO. All right. So here we go, logging on to our recently deployed Windows 10 device, which is also managed by Config Manager, and um, it has BitLocker management policy configured. Right. So. Let's bring up an administrative command prompt. And we'll do a GP update force. Of course, you're not going to have to do this in production because it will happen every 90 minutes or whatever the default is, and your cl clients will get the policy uh, by default automatically. But this is a lab and just want to demonstrate to you how it works and why you can use it and you know why it's a good idea to test everything test everything in a lab okay so let's just check the host name and yes it was that one great fantastic okay so it has updated group policy we can see that uh, it should be in the right ou so fingers crossed uh, we've done everything correctly let's power it off Let's disable secure boot. That will generate the BitLocker recovery message at boot up, and we should see a new uh, message. So, like I said, fingers crossed. Here it goes. <clears throat> so, look at that. Look at that. We have a BitLocker recovery screen, and right here, where I've got the mouse, it says to retrieve this key, contact the Windows Noob help desk. Alternatively, you can go to HTTP CM01 self-service from another PC. That is our custom message with our custom URL. And that came to this computer via a GPO, which we configured. The GPO itself was part of the uh, MDOP, uh, A A ADMX templates which we extracted into the central store and then configured a group policy for. So basically that's what this um, this video was about, was how to get those templates and how you can use them to, to improve, change, whatever, the, uh, the setup that you have with configuration managers, BitLocker management, native capabilities. Because remember, the MDOP client agent itself will respect these group policy settings. So there, I hope you found that useful. And if so, give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Uh, please subscribe if you can, I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video. Goodbye.